Okay, so my name is uh, Elia Abramovich and uh, I'm a TL at uh, Booking.com. Uh, I came today to talk to you about the Perl IntelliJ plugin. Uh, originally, it was a project that I started in one of the hackathons we have each uh, month. Uh, I got pretty far, but uh, I never got into really uh, parsing Perl because everybody said it's impossible, so I always found a different way. And then I was approached by a guy called the uh, Evgeny Yestigev, Alexander Yestigev, sorry, the Russian name is way too hard for me to pronounce. And uh, he did a brilliant job on uh, parsing entire uh, Perl uh, language. Uh, and that enabled us to have a lot of features that I'm going to show you later today. Uh, now, uh, I'll just start for a bit, the incentives. So, why do that? Why do we want to have an IntelliJ plugin? So first of all, IntelliJ is an IDE that is very robust. It's across all platforms and uh, it comes with very strong capabilities. Now, when you code with IntelliJ, you code faster and it reduces the amount of bugs. It doesn't make you a better developer, but it does help you like, identify all kinds of edge cases. Um, besides that, it's uh, about adding uh, new developers to our uh, uh, community. So a lot of people are very afraid to go into Perl because there is no real official ID. So you can go with Vim or you can go with Sublime. But uh, people that come from Java or PHP, they will feel really right at home if they work with IntelliJ or when we port this plugin to WebStorm. And uh, at the end, one IDE to roll them all. So if you have one IDE, it comes with very strong tools, very uh, version control, database connections. At the end, you will have a very strong tool at your hand just to support all the things that you already do uh, every day in the IntelliJ, in the programming way. So we're going to go to uh, show the few uh, Things. Let's see. Okay. Nice, so it shows me on one side, so I'm going to move so I can look as well. Okay, so uh, first of all, this is the basic. So this is the basic screen of the IntelliJ and some of you are maybe may familiar with it. So the first thing that you can see, besides the obvious syntax highlighting, is that uh, it automatically detects that variables are unused. That's very good if you want to start cleaning up your code. Um, in addition, we have a subroutines auto-completion. So that means that once you go here and you press control space, you can get all the subroutines of an object, of a package, to be more precise including the ones that are inherited from its parents. So you can get uh, various uh, objects, and I will show you in a bit. Um, the second thing is, uh, well, it's something that we are going to remove, but for now, uh, in order to detect the types, so we add this redundant uh, models department or models employee. And then, so apparently what you do is that you click you write the Skylar name, and then you can still autocomplete everything that's inside it. You can get the signature, it's really convenient. Now, of course, you can always go to the implementation, you can just control click and go to the declaration and see what's inside the arguments and everything. Really convenient when you're working with large projects. Can I ask something? Yes. Uh, are you saying that that uh, double declaration that of the my models department that that is going to go away? Yeah. So this part we are planning to remove it. it remove the need for it. So right. For now, for this stage, we are using it so IntelliJ can detect what kind of variable it means. Right. The form of type inference. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about uh, functions that you import via a use statement? Use package. And a list of functions. Yeah. Is that, uh, 
So you have the in general you have the use uh, option. So yes. we, we can use that and uh, in essence just when you anything that you import you you can just get the entire thing. The entire subroutines. Is that what you mean? Mm, no, but I think I made a silly question, so please never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, as I said, so we can uh, resolve the, the auto completion uh, to get the name. Now, what's nice here is you can see that we, we can actually cascade the, the subroutines. So the get head is actually has this uh, small uh, annotation that tells it, okay, you are returning the model's employee. I suspect that in the future we might be able to re resolve that uh, in some cases, but here, of course, you have self, so you're not sure what you're getting. But uh, in some cases, we might be able to detect that. And then from that, we get the get name. So, as you can see, you get a lot of things that you will never have to go inside the class to check them. You just get it automatically. And uh, another useful thing, uh, which I really think that we need uh, in every big project, is to add the deprecated. So, when you uh, see here, we added the deprecated annotation. And that automatically tells all the designers or developers, sorry, that okay, let's not use that uh, method anymore. Uh, very useful. I don't see any other way except putting some prints uh, and then they find out or putting die and stuff like that, which doesn't really work. So that's a very another useful feature. And so the next thing was. Uh, to show about uh, all kinds of nice shortcuts. So, you have, for instance, sorry, uh, you can have smart templates. So, you can just autocomplete every other uh, loops that you want. And if, for instance, uh, you have uh, you want to create a map, so. Uh, the general plans is that it will automatically detect the type, so it will get automatically complete for you. The, if you have a list named in a certain way, it will automatically complete, and then you just press enter and just do uh, something like uh, dollar underscore whatever. And again, it becomes, it makes the writing process just a bit more fluid and more helpful. And another thing that we've added is uh, the here doc, where uh, you can add the uh, actual different syntax. So in the middle, you can see that although I'm in Perl, <coughs> you can start getting, sorry, autocomplete of a uh, JavaScript. So, and that enables you to implement other languages. So, if for instance I go to uh, SQL, then I will get this block. Now, in general, in the future, we will uh, add connection to databases, so you will be able to fetch the actual tables. You won't have to go to a different tool. You just get the automatically the entire list. And another nice way is to show that we also detect in regex like if uh, it's a string or is it an expression, and then we can add comments. So everything, you, as you can see, is actually detected. Now, all these features are really nice and good, nice to have, and, but in the end, we also strive for bigger features. So we have the refactory, refactory so for instance, you can take this uh, package, you change it, it changes the example 2pm, it also changes all over the code. So, um, for instance, let's say employee db fetch, we can start messing with that. Yeah. And you can see it changes also in department because they're both inheriting from the same interface. And, uh, 
that that was changed. And another nice fe uh, feature is uh, something that I really, really like, is when you want to look for a specific package, so when you work with a big, big project, you can just do the autocomplete. Sorry that it's not showing you the path. Let's see if I can move the window. Let's try to move it. That's the brilliance of the... Union. Yeah. No, so it was actually for what it was, it's displaying part of the thing on the laptop screen. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. so <laughs> part of it is here. Yeah. Yeah. So, in general what it does, it just auto-completes the packages. So, it automatically detects the yeah. model with booking department. And then it takes me to the file. That makes a really quick navigation. You don't have to remember the file or anything. It just automatically works. You can always, of course, uh, go for the file name. The, uh, let's say department. And then you will get department PM. Let's see if now it will might give me a module. No, it always shows it to the left. And, OK, and then. Uh, as I said, the IntelliJ is a very strong tool, so with that you get all the benefits of version control. So it can work, work with various version controls, but for instance, uh, with uh, Git, you can get this nice tool. You can just move uh, to the right or, get, uh, or cancel the changes, whatever you decide. It makes uh, merging a lot more easier. And uh, at the end, the thing that all of these tools will just bring new developers, will make a laugh a little easier when developing Perl. And it uh, uh, will be a very nice feature for all of us. And so what's next? So we are working on uh, improving uh, performance and caching. And I also need to migrate uh, some parts of my repository to Alexander's repository, uh, improve grammar errors. So in essence, every time, uh, uh, right now, if you make a mistake, right now it shows, uh, I will show it in a second, it shows in a tiny tooltip, you will see it uh, actually in the gutter uh, side, and then you will be able to see when you write the same thing twice or make uh, basic errors just to prevent you from restarting again and to find out uh, too late. Uh, later on, we'll add uh, running and debugging uh, PL files, auto formatting, which will uh, be a nice feature. And for more, just join us. It's an open source project. Uh, just to show you in general uh, what I meant regarding errors. So, for instance, I'm going to write. Uh, let's remove this. So you see, okay, you're missing strict and uh, warnings. Good, I forgot. Besides that, uh, I'm going to just do something and and then it says unable to find some definition. So it will show in a nice icon here on the left, but that will really pop up your eye any issues that might uh, involve uh, might uh, occur. Um, questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, first off, this is great stuff. You're my new favorite person. I use Intelli <laughs> no, I use IntelliJ every day, and when I write Pro, I use Sublime or Vim because that's just I didn't know this existed. I actually looked a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't find anything online. Um, uh, apart that, I'm going to use this. Have you considered integration with uh, existing things like uh, Pro Tidy or in Pro Critic? So we are talking about adding uh, these features, but currently we are focusing on giving the basics, uh, finishing all kinds of tiny bugs, and once we stabilize it, second priority is the, to port it to web store. So hopefully that would encourage even more PHP developers, uh, and also we are hoping uh, Java developers, actually everyone that used IntelliJ, 
to add to the project. And of course, Perl developers that can bring their insights uh, uh, from the core. Um, the nice thing, uh, but later on, is we will also add uh, Perl tagging. But right now, I could already use this. This is fairly yeah, production yes, ready. This is a this is usable. This you can download it. Uh, there is also also in the repository. Uh, actually, I'm not connected to the internet, but you can just go to this address and. Uh, Inside you will have also the compile jar, so all you have to do is activate the IntelliJ, Control shift a install, well, install the plugin, you can look online how to install a plugin, and it will work for you, you don't, uh, there is a wiki there how to configure your project, and it's very usable, and again, any, if you like it, just uh, feel free to contribute, we are happy to get more people at the work. Great, thanks. Uh, how much of this is uh, usable without uh, requiring? How much of this, of this is independent from IntelliJ? Um, how much of this would no, be usable as an external? Project? Almost none, because well, we have the BNF, which is the uh, you can think about as the schema of the language. Yes, that's something that maybe you can take and use. But it, again, it's a little altered the way that IntelliJ interprets it. The rest of the code is purely to integrate into IntelliJ. So all the searches, all the refactoring, all this stuff, uh, these are features of this strong IDE, and we work on the integration part. Like, it's a lot of work and a lot of use cases, especially when it's Perl, but that's what we do. So you can get the BNF file, and again, it's an open source, source so feel free to browse and anything. Uh, Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>